Yeah, so how are you this morning, Jodie? It's quite early. It's a bit too early, to be honest. Mm. I mean, I, I'm so excited to meet uh, this author, but yeah, yeah, it's cold. It's cold and I am still in my pyjamas. Don't oh, tell anyone. I'm jealous. I've got mm. like five jumpers on. <laughs> I'm not in my pyjamas, but I wish I was. Yeah, I've also got a jumper on, but yeah, to cover up the fact that I'm wearing my pyjamas. And the worst thing is she's she's down under, so she's going to be just there and like... Boiling, I know. And just, I know. Just, yeah, loving the sun and all time. Oh, <sighs> makes you jealous, doesn't it? It does, but, yeah. but I'm so excited to meet her, so... Yeah, me too, but I haven't even had a coffee yet, so I'm running on the uh, excitement of meeting a, a real-life author. <laughs> this is like English teacher heaven. It is. <laughs> <laughs> living the dream. It's your own time you're wasting. Ramblings from Beyond the Classroom with Marie and Jodie. So, I'm going to assume as an English teacher that you are, in fact, a keen reader. What Indeed. What sort of thing do you read? Um, I love... Well, obviously, I love fiction and non-fiction, actually, mm. and I really like um, fantasy novels very into the history of witches and things like that Ooh. um so and I like a good a good old murder mystery as well yeah mm. yeah same I like mostly kind of fantasy or like escapism books so books that are entirely unrealistic yeah because it's all about getting out of real life for me yeah so I was obviously a massive potterhead um I <laughs> queued up until midnight to get the book oh, and everything Jody. along those lines. That's lovely. Um, I, yeah, I just I like all the stuff that is in a completely different world. That's yeah. kind of where I'm happy. Although having said that, some of the books that I'm reading at the minute are not like that at all. Um, so do you read young adult fiction or? Yes, I do. Um, I mean one of the one of the. <laughs> ones that I read that is like a a dirty secret is the Twilight books because I found one day mm. teaching in class two girls trying to secretly read them under the desk <laughs> and I was so pleased. I was just <laughs> like, yes, you think you're rebelling. I think this is amazing. <laughs> so I decided to read them so that I could talk to the girls about them. So that that's so that's mm. something that sticks in my mind. As a sort I mean, of... I was the right age for Twilight, so I think I was yes. in sixth form when they came out. Yeah. Um, and I did read them all. Yeah. I know, I have to confess to enjoying yeah. them. I, I mean... I enjoyed them at the time, but yeah. for me, I constantly reread books. Like, oh, that's I'm a, interesting. A rereader, ah. um, and I haven't ever reread them. So I no. enjoyed them, but I didn't love them because I. But so you like, left for example, them there. Yeah. I'm reading the Chronicles of St Mary's at the minute, and I literally got to the end of the last book mm. and went back to the first book oh. without a stop. And I just, I, I think it's a dyslexic thing. I, I remember someone telling me something about it when I was being assessed. But I just, and I can read a book a thousand different times. And because I'm dyslexic, I've missed out whole sentences. So it's a whole new experience. Each I time. see. You see, I don't often reread. The mm. only author I do reread is Terry Pratchett. Oh. Because I do find something different in those yeah. books every single time I read them. Yeah. And I love, I love them. What would you, would you have any kind of recommendations for, for a book for me or for, for a lovely audience? I'm, I'm just reading some very weird things at the moment which is why I struggle to recommend anything because no one else will like them I'm reading a book about the signs and symbols found in Ice Age art at the moment and See, that, you know it's a bit like, niche that sounds like the interesting thing for someone to tell me about but I'm not going to read yeah that. exactly because there are like 32 symbols that that span thousands of yeah. years and are common across all of Europe that's the most interesting thing about that it that is interesting yeah yeah so we have an amazing guest today coming all the way from australia which is why we're up so early uh i'd like to introduce verity verity would you like to introduce yourself oh hi yes my name is verity croker and i'm in brisbane at the moment in australia and it's 6 30 in the evening for me so 
I'm lucky. You are. You are. <laughs> <laughs> and it is also sunny there. Yes, it yeah, is. That's right. Not that I'm resentful or anything. <laughs> <laughs> By the magic of the internet, we are able to talk to you on the other side of the world. It still blows my mind that. It's wonderful, isn't it? Really mm, it wonderful. really is. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm. So, Verity, how many books have you written? Uh, so I've written seven wow. books. Mm. Uh, two, two for young adults. Yeah. And three for like middle grade children, mm-hmm. eight to twelve year olds. Yeah. And then there's a textbook for high schools, mm-hmm. and then an adult one. But mostly I focus on young adult writing for teenagers. That's my sweet spot that I really enjoy writing for. Yeah. What is it you enjoy about writing for young adults? Um, I think maybe I'm still stuck at being 16 myself. Mm. I still, <laughs> I still remember all those things. Like everything was new and yeah. you know scary and interesting, and you're never quite sure what's going on with relationships. Yeah. Mm. And I think I think that's why a lot of adults enjoy reading young adult material yeah. as well because we're all still like that. We're still finding our way. Through absolutely, our lives. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't really change that, does it, as you get older? So, we're here to talk about Gilda's Ark. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's it about, kind of what was your inspiration? Well, I was really inspired. We were on a cruise in, in the uh, Caribbean, actually, mm. and we were late coming back from a shore excursion. Mm. And yeah. um, they always say if the, if the excursion's organised by the ship, then you can the ship will wait for you. Yeah. Mm. But we were about an hour and a half late and when we were coming around the corner I thought, will the Uh-oh. ship be there? Yeah. <laughs> and I really I really felt quite ill wondering if the ship was going I'm to sure. be there. Hmm. Anyway, it was there. So I started to think, what if the ship wasn't there? Mm. And so it just it just started from there. And then um, I ended up setting the story in the Pacific Ocean instead of the Caribbean because of the mm. logistics of them where they end up I going. See. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so then I had the main character, Gilda. Um, she's on a ship and she's um, kidnapped wow. by environmental refugees. The interesting thing about Gilda's Ark was it was one of the easiest books I've ever written because to me it was like a movie in my mind. Ah, I, just, yeah. I just saw it. So I'd come home from work and I'd just sit down at the computer and I'd just start writing what I saw in my head. And That's then I'd, yeah, I'd forget about it during the day at work, but obviously it was just going through my mm. mind at work. Mm. And so I'd come back again in the afternoon and sit down and just keep writing what I saw in my head. So I wish I wish oh, all the books wow. were like that. Like, yeah, because yeah. it wrote itself practically. Well, yeah, because I could see it. Do you feel, so quite often when I'm reading a book, particularly one that I really, really like, there's almost a sense of grief at the end because you kind of, done with those characters yeah and I definitely had that with Harry Potter as a kid I currently have it with the series I'm reading at the moment called the Chronicles of St Mary's um but luckily there's still sequels coming out so it's fine (laughs) but do you get that as an author to kind of once you're finished do you feel how do you know you're finished and do you feel like this sense of emptiness because you're not with those characters anymore yeah, you do miss the characters, and I particularly miss Gilda because I thought mm. she was such a great character. Mm. But then you move on to the next one that you're working with, and yeah. then you get close to those characters. But I, Gilda still has a very you know, strong place in my heart, really. Yeah. Mm. Yes, but you, you have to move on and just focus on the next group of yeah. characters yeah, and get next... to know them as they they just show you who they are, really. I don't... I don't sit down and plan mm. what a character is going to be like. Okay. Um, I, I don't. I don't plan that at all. It's just who they they become. As I'm writing, right. they become mm. themselves, and they do things that I don't expect oh. them to do. They surprise me, and um, so yeah, you never really know what they're going to do. Oh. So well, that's great. So mm. I, they sort of take me on a bit of a journey. Mm. That's so interesting because as teachers, we've all for the planning before they start writing. And yes, that and, is something yeah. that students really complain about. I don't want to do the planning. I just want to I write it. Planning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you do any planning? That, well, not at first. Ah. It's maybe mm. through I'll write the first draft 
Yeah. And then I'll, then I'll have to think about, does this work? Do I need to put this back there? But I, I, I don't sit down at the very beginning and write out a plan, but I know a lot of, well, there's, they call them plotters and pantsers. So the plotters plot and the pantsers mm-hmm. write by the seat of their pants. Ah. So, and then there's some people that are in the middle. Yeah. And there's, there's no right way to do it because even yeah. some really famous writers uh, don't plot. No. And so, yeah, but in, I, so I'll write the whole thing and then sometimes I analyse, I'll put mm. on a big sheet of paper what happens here, what happens here, what happens here, what happens here, mm. and then I look at it again and think what, what could I do to improve it, but I never sit down at the beginning and plan it no so I can understand why kids at school don't want to sit down and plan because that's yeah. taking sort of some of the creativity away yeah so maybe just sometimes yeah I'm just thinking maybe you can have talk to the kids about the plotters and the pantsers yeah and say yeah. everyone's different every writer is different and some people combine both would you say that's kind of was true for you at school you know did you plan your essays and your creative writing or did you just kind of feel the flow which is very much what I would just I can just type I just can't plan yeah well the the actual essays would have to be planned Mm. because you've got to put in all the quotations and you've Mm. got to research and all that sort of stuff but I never really enjoyed that aspect of it whereas the creativity I wouldn't have I would never have sat down and worked out what I was going Mm. to write I would have just written it Mm. yeah I never planned my essays I'm sorry (laughs) especially sorry to my film studies teachers for a level yeah that's Um, for the structure with the essays you need some sort of plan see the way you work Verity it sounds like you have a like the germ of an idea and then your subconscious is working away on it and then it presents it to your conscious mind like you say Uh, yeah as I'm yeah, yeah, as I'm writing it. Yeah, which is yeah. amazing. And I think, actually, that's a really good idea to maybe try this in the classroom. That's given me a few ideas. Um, so what are the themes in Gilda's Ark? Well, the main themes are about the environment because yeah. it's environmental refugees yeah. and they um, the islands are being swamped. It's a fictitious group of islands called mm. Levi Archipelago, so it's mm-hmm. fictitious. I didn't want to say one particular island because there are some islands in the Pacific that are struggling yeah. With, yeah. with water level rise and salinity, a lot of salts getting into their mm-hmm. groundwater and they're having trouble growing their food. And it really is actually a prob- real mm-hmm. problem in, mm-hmm. in some of the islands in the Pacific. And, you know, at the recent meeting they were talking about having to pay the poorer countries for what yeah. the richer countries have done. And yeah. that's part of it that, that yeah. we've caused this. And so... The, the water with the water level rising then mm. the, the they had to leave the islands mm. and so that's why they kidnapped the ship in fact they kidnapped they had 10 ships and not just they, oh, they oh, kidnapped wow. yes they kidnapped the ship that Gilda was on mm. but then they also they also had these other ships that they had reworked from the junkyard the ship junkyard ah. and refurbished them so but each ship had thousands of people because the the island the islanders wanted the whole population of the island together yeah to mm. move to another place together i see and yeah. so they they'd been offered and i know that um kiribati in the in the pacific area they've been offered to go to different countries but that would break up the community that would break up their population yeah, yeah they're very close knit communities yeah island communities tend to be don't they visit schools to talk about your work or do book readings or you know. I do book readings yeah. and I do um I do festivals I'm, mm-hmm. I've been on some panels at festivals and mm-hmm. that's really good fun yeah really enjoy that brilliant and what are your memories of reading when you were at school oh I just absolutely loved it yeah Me that, too. Um, I, yeah I just absolutely loved it and I'm a little bit different from Jodie because I used to like all the real things like uh, the Diary of Anne Frank, mm-hmm. and um, I am David. Did you know that oh, story? Yeah. I am David. Yeah, yeah, nope. yeah, those, yeah, and yeah. Um, those those sort of realistic mm. things that transported me away to another place, mm. but a realistic place. Interesting. How do you tackle kind of representation in your book? Because it's such an important thing now, and there's some criticism of 
some of the classics and the kind of more modern yeah. classics of not being representative of the different voices and the different identities kind of in the world. Yeah, Is that the, something you consciously do? or? Well, there's a big movement now for we need diverse books. Mm-hmm. Mm. And there's so there's there are more and more books coming out, which is fantastic. Yeah. Different genders, different races and different abilities. And so the the publishers and and, and some agents are very, very aware and mm. they're actively actively seeking those sort of things. There's more and more books being published now that are representing diversity, which is yeah. fabulous. And there'll be more and more of that in the future. I'll tell you what I've taken more of an interest in recently that I didn't think I'd like so much, but I'm finding I am, is graphic novels. So I I was sort of a bit resistant initially because I was thinking they're sort of like comics. Yeah, yeah. Horrified comics. But um, I've read some really, really good ones recently and... I'm I'm really now I've changed my mind. I think oh. I think they can be absolutely yeah. amazing because especially for kids that have difficulty reading because they can see the pictures mm. and they can see the expression on the kids' faces. Mm. Yeah. And I I I've got a lot more well respect I suppose for for graphic novels now than I had in the past and they are becoming really popular. The yeah. publishers are the publishers are really looking out for them. Yeah, and the the thing is, the kids are still reading. If they're reading, exactly. they're still words. So, I think it's great. Yeah, the, and I, for... I do think it doesn't matter how you read. Reading is such yeah. a reading those stories is such a joy. Regardless, I love an audio book, and I'm still getting those classic stories. You know, I've been listening to Animal Farm recently, and I've never read that. It's I just can't engage with yeah. it as a text. But I'm still kind of accessing that classic. Yeah, absolutely. By listening to Stephen Fry read it to me. Oh, and Stephen Fry's amazing. And you're getting all the concepts and everything when you're listening. You're yeah, still getting yeah. all the concepts and the vocabulary. Yeah. And this and you're internalizing sentence structure and all those things as well from mm. listening. I, I'm I'm not a great listener, to be honest. <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm better at reading. I prefer to, to read, to look at yeah. words. I think because I just start to daydream maybe when I'm listening. Yeah. But mm. I've started re- recently to, with my manuscripts, because you've got the function where it can read back to you mm. on Word, mm. that's that's really a useful thing to have yeah. because then you can listen back and then it also helps you when you can pick up little mistakes that you've made, typos ah. and things, because yeah. you just read over mm. what you think you're reading. Yes, yes. You know, like the, today I found check instead of cheek. Well, I would have just, I knew they were talking about their faces, so yeah. cheek, mm-hmm. I was read cheek. But it, it said, when the reader said it to me, check, I thought, I quickly looked at the screen, I thought, oh, another one. So I had like 20, yeah. 20 little typos like that. Yeah. That I wouldn't have picked up no matter how many times. No, you wouldn't. That I read it myself. That's a really good tip, actually. Maybe we could. Yeah, I think I might have to use yeah, that. Yeah, you in the classroom <laughs> as well. We always say read it backwards. You pick more up. It's a bit hard, yeah, but it's hard That's with terrifying. sixty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> it's your own time you're wasting. Ramblings from beyond the classroom with Marie and Jody. There's not a lot they don't know about teaching. So uh, do you have a name for the book you're working on, Verity, at the minute? I do. It's called Bella's Rock. Bella's Rock. Oh, yeah. I Bella's really Rock. look forward to that. Oh, Thank dear, you so, so Thank much you. for joining us today, Verity. It has been an absolute pleasure. I could talk to you all, all day. day. Yeah. Um, and you'd want to go to bed, but we'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I really Would enjoyed like it. To... Really enjoyed it too. Oh, I'm so Good. glad. We like to finish our podcast with something that's very, very common in, in classrooms in England, which is two stars and a wish. So two lovely stars from what you've done today and a wish for what you'd like to change. Uh, who wants to go first? Does anyone have a star? I've today? got a star from today's podcast. I think my star would be allowing students to write without making a plan. That's something that 
in my DNA mm. as an English teacher. <laughs> you know, it's like you yeah. don't do that. You always plan. And I think it's a really good idea to try it the other mm. way. See if that works better. Both our producer and Marie's faces are a little bit like, this is scary. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like the idea of this. Um, so, yeah. Well, uh, I agree. I agree with that one too. I can I have that as a star too because sure. <laughs> I think it's I think it's just mm. such a a wonderful thing to free up the kids mm. because I remember being a student myself. I really hated mm. the confinements of everything. You're always told this is right, that's wrong. Yeah, and if if you just freed up, yeah, exactly, it allows the creativity, I, doesn't it? Yeah, mm. I think that it, I think that it'd be wonderful if I'd be interested to hear how you go with it and what they. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, definitely try react. it. I will definitely try it. And please, if you're listening, try it as well yeah. and, and email us and, email and let us know how how you get on. Mm. Um, I think my style is going to be to let people bring in the media and bring in kind of read stories and, and absorb stories in a way that works for them, whether it's a graphic novel or whether it's an audio book or, you know, whatever works for them. Yeah. They're still the stories and they're still kind of, it doesn't have to be paper. It can be whatever works for them. Yeah, and exactly. Let people explore that because I didn't realise audio books was the way forward until a couple of years ago. Uh, so, yeah. What would our wish be for reading in schools then? Um, I guess that was my wish, really, not my star. <laughs> I guess so. I, yeah, my wish, I think, would just be that I feel like schools are very pressured in terms of time and mm. there's not much space to just yeah. sit and read in school. And I think I'd like to see more of that. Yes. Yeah, if time can be freed up for reading and a wide variety a real wide variety of material for the kids to choose from exactly. themselves. Yeah. And for everyone to have access to those books. And there's been some amazing projects to like that. So in Rotherham near us, Dolly Parton's Imagination yep. Library is a big thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she set it up in England, in Rotherham, first of all. And just kind of more things like that so everyone's got access to a book. Yeah. But as a maths teacher, I do have to have my wish that I wish the same kind of pressure to to read and there is a big thing about literacy in schools Mm. could be given to numeracy and there's a kind of fear of of doing that for some teachers and the way that teachers talk about it is so different you know I always say no one would ever stand up and say I can't read but people always stand up and say I can't do maths and just have that same love for numeracy it doesn't have to be maths numeracy is not the same as maths Mm -hmm. um it's a part of maths, but yeah, kind of to have that same. That's a joy. good call, Jodie. Yeah, because you yeah. know when you have those, um, you know, I am reading such a thing posters up mm. all around the school, so that the students can see that teachers of different subjects still read. Well, we yeah. we could just think of a numeracy equivalent. That's a podcast on its own. Well, I agree about the maths too, because we use maths mm. much more than we think. Yeah. And kids do think I can't do maths mm. because it is, it is too hard. But if it is practical, mm. yeah, it makes a complete a complete difference if it's practical and it can be fun as yeah. well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's yeah, thank been you. An absolute pleasure, and thank you to our audience for listening. Indeed. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Verity. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed it. Oh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> This podcast is proudly produced by Beyond. Please bear in mind the views and opinions expressed are those of individuals and may not represent those of Beyond or Twinkle.